Hey everybody, Scott Walters, buckle up, strap in, I got a hard hitting, pull no punches, no sugar coating it, no rainbows, no sunshine. Just going to give it to you and give it to you straight. We got a good one to unpackage today. Buckle up, strap in, hold on to your hats and glasses as we blow the lid off the U.S. housing market. Why do we want to do that, Scott? Why do we want to blow the lid off the U.S. housing market? I thought it was all rainbows and sunshine. You cannot lose in real estate. Well, my friends, I got news for millions of people. We're going to take a look at today. To drive our point home, we're going to take a look at what's now. The facts of what's transpiring in the biggest artificially produced housing bubble ever recorded in world history. That's right, we're living through historic times. The biggest bubble in U.S. history was normalized through a casino climate, the wealth effect, the new normal narrative. The only thing that's normal is it got extremely abnormal. We are living in the most abnormal times, but we'll just go ahead and kind of stick with the U.S. housing market ever seen, you know, and that's what was so curious, but I can pull from the previous 08 bubble that, that we all want to pull from, and I've always said, and I know many of you as, have as well, the only difference between 08 and today, this time's worse, bigger bubble, bigger blowback. That's what we got going on here, friends. So I, I, about a year ago, I recorded or uh, reported and recorded that ten, over 10 million people bought at the height of this bubble in the euphoria, and they didn't stop there. They went above and beyond to praise values. They got into bidding wars. We didn't see that in no way. This one's really scary. Like I'm scared. I scare myself a lot of times as we turn on the camera and start start talking about these these issues insane so those 10 uh, million people that bought pretty much now most if not all of them are upside down in their purchase they no longer own their homes their homes now own them meaning they can no longer sell them for what they paid for them so they drank the kool-aid they gambled with their financial future and now they're trying to convince themselves that they can weather the storm, it'll come back, this, whatever, something. It's always something. I can pull from a previous experience, and I've, I've shared this information before in the last bubble. I think I bought around 07. 06 was the height. 07, it started to soften. And then I drank the Kool-Aid by accident. I watched the house. It went down in, from its original list price to about 25%. Less, I'm like, well, I'm a smart guy. I got this thing for 25% less than what it was originally listed for. Guess what old Scott Walters did? He caught a falling knife. And then when it went upside down, well, you know, it'll come back. Real estate cycles. Hang in there, honey. You'll be all right. Those are the things people are now telling them. It's not all right. I hate to be the one that say it. It's not going to be okay for millions. The only people that maybe it's okay for are the ones that have the wherewithal, the financial wherewithal to weather that storm and carry a depreciated asset along for the ride if and when this one ever digs its way out. I don't know how many years it will take for your house to be worth what it paid for. Maybe never. Like, this is a pretty significant event that we just went through. This whole crisis. And we didn't just overheat the U.S. housing market. We overheated the global financial markets. Not just the mortgage market like we saw in 08 that had a ripple effect through the, the global financial markets. We would be lucky if we could get out of it. With something like that, in my opinion, we overheated every big economy in the world in the exact same way, simultaneously. Minimized the severity. We minimized it, mainstream media reporting on the red hot housing market, agents coming on. It's a good time to buy. Lines down the street to view an open house. FOMO, honey, look at all these people. Write them an offer, overpay. Tap into our savings. Borrow from mom and dad. Whatever the case may be. So we're going to reset these markets. It would appear as that's what they're now demonstrating. 
all over America, and courtesy of one of you, a subscriber sent in an email that we're going to utilize today to drive our point home. If you're new, please subscribe. Subscribe right away. There's never been a more important time in history to get centered and surrounded with like-minded people. Iron will sharpen iron. We're going to raise awareness, ring the bell, sound the alarm, and let people know the biggest artificially created housing bubble can't sustain itself. It's reverse course. We can see it now in black and white, but the scary part about this one is this is what happens in a housing bubble that for people that bought at the top of it but i said people don't get rich buying at the height of a super bubble they get rich buying outside the bubble so we'll be here trying to do clean up on aisle three for the people that did but you're gonna have to learn some important lessons hopefully you'll get to a place like me where i don't regret what i went through in 08 now and it was no fun. I certainly didn't want to go do it again, though. That would be doing the same thing over expecting a different result. What's that? Definition of insanity. But I learned some important lessons. What I've learned now is very valuable, but I certainly would hate to go do, do, deal with that again. But I know many. I know that's what was needed to get me where I'm at today. And today is very nice and very good on many levels. It's not all rainbows and sunshine. Scott Walters isn't out all rainbows and sunshine, living, you know, I don't know, I mean, things are good, we'll just leave it there, things are pretty good today as a result of being awake and having experience to pass along to others, so let's go ahead and jump over to today's email and property, then we'll meet back here to wrap it up, let's get started. All right, our subscriber writes, hello, Scott, Realtors were saying that Florida is untouchable, that it's been undervalued for a very long time. There's a shortage of supply. Boomers are aging in place, so there's a shortage of single-family homes. It's the number one state for migration. Blah, blah, blah. Well, check this house out. It was bought by OfferPad and has been sitting for 143 days. They are now underwater on it. They have marked it down $65,000 and cannot sell it. It's a beautiful house, too. Minutes from the beach and newer construction. I almost bought at the top of the bubble. I had an offer accepted, but I'm so glad I walked away. I might be temporarily living in a shoebox, but I'm not throwing my money away. I'm able to keep saving and watch prices fall. Thanks for keeping it real. Well, thank you. Let's jump over to today's property. And here you go, folks, a newer construction Florida home stuck on the market. Let's jump in to some price history. And here you go, purchased back in 2022 for $385,000, now stuck on the market at $374,000. And if they get an offer, it won't be that one. Let's get back to the studio so we can wrap this one up. All right, friends, welcome back. So what do you think? What do you think of that? There's proof positive that people are going underwater right now in their purchases. They don't own their homes. Their homes now own them. If they sell their homes, they're taking a massive hit. I don't know what the story is with this one. Apparently, it's somebody ready to take their lumps because they're going to take some lumps. They're not going to be able to sell the house if it sells at all for what they paid for it. And guess what happens if they can't make this one happen? If this house we looked at today does not get an offer where these people, you know, are comfortable taking whatever type of hit. They're, they're taking a hit. We know that. They're taking it a probably twenty, fifty thousand dollar hit. And apparently they'd rather do that than have the property go in foreclosure. Maybe because now, like our subscriber is saying, I'm stacking cash and I'm gonna wait this one out and then I'm gonna see if it pencils out and I'm gonna have Scott Walters help me do that if and when properties present themselves to pencil out, cost to own, cheaper to rent, I'll, I'll write an offer on that. But you can't write an offer on a property that won't make its own payment, courtesy of a renter, so you can climb the ladder and become wealthy in real estate, or just know you pulled an insurance policy for yourself on your primary home that if and when something may happen to you, or the economy, or anything, Renter goes in and keep the asset. Purchase price is less important because cost to own is less than what it will rent for. Nobody thinks about that. That's why FOMO factories, Lennar, KB, all these, they build FOMO factory homes to tour with on-site salespeople FOMOing you in. They're not discussing, is it pencil out? 
They're disgusting. Don't you like these color schemes and finishes? I might be able to get you some granite countertops to your sign today. <sighs> I laugh at myself sometimes as I report on this stuff. Insanity. Absolute insanity. In final thoughts, I come to you as a friend, as a content creator. Somebody wants to see you not only win in real estate, win in life. Understanding the biggest artificially created housing bubble ever produced in world history. Reverse course. We're watching people in real time now go upside down in their purchases. Bubble buyers. And guess what, my friends? Just like I mentioned a moment ago, brand new construction is delivering miles and miles of unfinished and unoccupied homes into a stalled environment. They're going to take a hit too. Many of us were worried won't the investors come buy up all the homes? They won't be able to because they're in worse shape than their clients. And I've always said that here at the show. You never want an agent that's in worse shape than their clients. Well, builders, you're in worse shape than your clients too. I don't know where your margins are, but I'm sure they're getting thin, thin, thin. Like the property we looked at today. If they can't get the numbers that they need to just take their haircut and get out, they're going into foreclosure. Every bubble has produced a, a crash. Every crash has produced foreclosures. So it'll be our job to continue to stay centered and surrounded, like-minded, heat map, temperature check it every step of the way. Because it's not only what we need, it's in fact what we deserve. If you appreciate the content, I'm going to humbly ask you to give the video a like, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment below. I'd love to hear from you. Social media links in the description of this video if you'd like to contact me there. Along with the links to channels I've appeared on, I think you might enjoy. If you need help buying or selling real estate here in America, I have the biggest network of top rated agents in the nation ready to assist you to make sure you're taken care of and smart choices moving forward. You need a high level team that has not drank the Kool-Aid, that's ready to help you buy when fear and panic are sweeping these markets, when there's blood in the streets, and the streets are starting to run red in many locations. If you enjoyed this video, I know you're gonna love the next video on your screen, and there's an easy subscribe icon for your convenience. As always, thank you for your time. Please go make it count today. I'll see you on the next video.